Holy turn, yeah. Yeah, that was, a, that was a lot of turn there, 150 feet. Well, like it started like normal. It started like the other ones. Started right. If you're trying to sling around a dog leg with a sharp dog leg left, this might be the club. <laughs> Today we've got a big driver comparison. It is the six most popular draw bias drivers here from 2022. Thomas with the shots. We'll see what Trackman tells us. And golfers, if you haven't yet, make sure you subscribe to the YouTube channel. You drop a like on this video and you tell us in the comments which of these draw bias drivers is the best. Hey golfers, I'm Drew Mahold with Second Swing Golf. I'm joined by Thomas Campbell, Master Club Fitter here at Second Swing. Draw bias drivers, Thomas, from 2022. We've got six of them here. Uh, draw bias is, a, is an interesting category. Usually it's golfers that do fight that slice, and there is a large percentage of golfers that are fighting that slice. Depending on where you get the information, 60 plus percent of golfers usually have some kind of slice and they're uh, struggling with it and trying to control it. That's where these drivers can come in and really help. Yeah, and you mentioned sixty percent. I think is definitely the majority of golfers yeah. will fight a slice more than they are flight fighting a hook. Mm -hmm. um, so if you do hook the ball, stay away from this video. Yep. <laughs> stay away from the golf clubs. We're talking about people that are fighting that right ball. Yep. Uh, the other thing to keep in mind, you know, we mentioned draw bias. It is a bias. Right. It's not going to solve everything. You know, the face may be shut. The, the center of gravity might be in the heel. You can obviously adjust the, the settings to be more upright and that yep. kind of stuff. But keep in mind. If you have a severe slice, it's not going to cure it. If you have a little slice, it might get you pretty close. Yeah. yeah, so that's, like you mentioned, it's just a bias. And really the bias is created by, in most of these drivers, there's just a little bit more weight or mass in the heel. And that will help the golfer kind of close that face at impact. And, you know, instead of opening that face and having it go right with more right curvature, you're at least starting the ball a little bit left and that ball flight's corrected a little bit. So that's how these drivers do it in various different ways to some extent, but generally it's because either a weight is positioned there that you can see externally or internally there is just more mass in the heel. Yeah, and I think for today's test, I'm probably going to be fighting the left side of the yeah. screen um, just because I'm already typically a drawer of the ball. Yeah. Uh, but they're still going to show the differences in, in, in that curve and how much easier it is to get that ball to go to the left. Right, so today we've got six drivers. Um, we've got the TaylorMade Stealth HD the Ping G425 SFT, the Mizuno STX, the Cobra LTD Max, the Callaway Rogue ST Max D, and we have the Tour Edge E523. This one is a bonded hosel, so the shaft will be a little bit different than the rest of the models, but we did want to include it in this test because in our initial testing of E523, really good stuff. So uh, we've got six models in total here today, Thomas. Um, I think it's gonna be some, some really good numbers there. Yeah. Um your predictions. I'm, I'm trying to think about how much curve I'm actually going to yeah. get, which will you know, be, be interesting to see. And, you know, it could be 50 to 100 feet of curve to, to the left, yeah. typically being a draw or draw of the golf ball here too. But yeah, I, uh, I would expect, um, these, are, these are your models that you come in for a, a fitting maybe in 2023 and you're trying to find something that maybe isn't quite, you know, all the way up to $600 for a yep. driver. Right. Might help save you a little bit knowing that, hey, these drivers did well in 2022. Mm -hmm. throw, throw them in the mix. Sure, sure, yeah. And we got them all at 10 and a half degrees aloft. We've got the same golf shaft here, right? The uh, Besides, of course, the E523. We've got the Graphite Design IZ Stiff Flex here. So um, I think I'm ready to watch hit some tee shots here. Let's do it. Definitely drawn. Holy turn, yeah. Yeah, that was a, that was a lot of turn there, 150 feet. Well, like it started like normal. It started like the other ones. Yeah. Started right. If you're trying to sling around a dog leg, sharp dog leg left, this might be the club. <laughs> a little better. Right, oh, no, just left of the line. Bad. No. All right, so Thomas, three clubs down here. 
Um, I think it was it was cool to see that ball turning over quite a bit um, on those shots, and you weren't really swinging as fast as you can either. So um, you've got it was the E523, the LTDX Max, and the G425 SFT. So uh, it, we'll we'll talk a little little bit here about sound and feel. I know we kind of have a good familiarity on especially ping, right? We know how that yep. club usually sounds off the driver. So uh, tell me what you you found there. Yeah. So I mean, sound and feel that you know. They all sounded a little louder. Yeah. Um, the tour edge is pretty loud. Yeah. Uh, so that's kind of our initial testing. We found that as well. And Ping's known for its noise when yeah. it comes to um, hitting the drivers. One thing I did notice looking down at them though, um, the LTDX Max looked like it was the most neutral address. Okay. So they've probably done something in the design of the club head to try and make it look to like maybe high smarter. in the draw bias. Maybe yeah, exactly. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Interesting. Um, but it's pretty evident when you put down the Tour Edge Hot Launch E523, you're seeing the offset with this one. Yeah. And then the ping, you can see a little bit of draw bias with it, but you can't yeah. really see it with the Cobra. I think okay. it's interesting. Interesting. Um, so we should bring this up in terms of draw bias because we're seeing curvature to the left. You can kind of see, you know, we have some good kind of range there. There's maybe some, I mean, they're all curving left, right? Yep. And they're, you're starting almost all of them too out to the, to the right in terms of you're bringing it back over the, the center line or the center right. target, if you will. I didn't so. want to live in the left bunker all day. Right. So I just kind of yeah, and, right and you mentioned and it, you mentioned in the beginning you are a player that draws the ball, so not yeah. maybe a perfect candidate for the testing here necessarily. But um, we've got E five twenty three G four twenty five SFT and the LTDX Max. So we've got the E five twenty three, uh, the white tracers. Uh, orange there is the G four twenty five SFT. The blue LTDX Max. Um, interesting. Seems like that orange is a little bit farther left, maybe? Yeah, um, and it looked like it was a little higher, so it might have had more time, yeah. more potential to draw sure. a little bit. Yeah. So I'd be curious to see, looking at the numbers, just how much curve yeah. we're on those um, those three clubs. Yeah, yeah so, so we are seeing a little more curve with the uh, at the G425 SFT on average. They are getting comfortably feet. high enough in the air, though, all of them, to, like you mentioned, to draw enough for somebody. Right. Yeah, pretty good. And then if you kind of look at the, the ball speed and efficiency, yeah, pretty good. Mm -hmm. 148, 149, 149. And then one thing we should bring up here too, just for now, dispersion in terms of how consistent it was. I know we saw with four out of the five ping shots, you know, we have um, these ones here and they're all pretty similar carry distances. Yep. Um, we saw this one a little bit shorter. Um, so that's one thing to look for here is maybe when the ball is drawing, does it dive out of the sky or does it you know, stay up high enough to give you enough distance? Because I think that's the issue with too much draw or too much hook is does it dive out of the sky versus carrying uh, far enough? And again, people that struggle with the slice probably won't have that issue, but something to monitor. And I think the spin on the driver with the G425 SFT being a little higher than the other two, it helped mm -hmm. the ball stay in the air a little longer. Sure. To allow it not to dive out of the sky. Yeah, We're talking, definitely. yeah, a little bit more spin overall. Sure. Yeah. Okay, well, we have uh, three more models to hit here and then we'll break down all six of them here. Wow, this is going left. Yeah, it looks really shut at a dress. So much for draw bias. All right. It is the more compact head though, isn't it? Yeah, this is the one that's that unique one. All right, so Thomas, the last three clubs there, Rogue uh, ST Max D, Stealth HD, and the Mizuno STX brought us some more data. Um, look and feel of those ones quick before we dive in. Um, I know the STX is the one I'm most curious about your feedback on because it it's the, the the message from Mizuno is a little bit different on its draw bias model there compared to the other ones. Right. I think you know, looking at these three, there was definitely one that looked more draw bias at, at address, and that was the Rogue ST Max sure. D. Um, it just looked like the face was a little more shut compared to the other two. 
I think TaylorMade does a good job of hiding, disguising yeah. the fact that it's yeah. maybe a draw bias club. Um, it just looked more neutral, and the club head actually looks a little smaller than the other yeah. two from okay. the dress. Interesting. And then the STX, I'm still not sure where it fits in. Yeah, so <laughs> and yeah. we'll get to the numbers and the flight path and dispersion and everything, but yeah. um, that's that's a unique one because yeah. um, there is. I mean, you can see it on the. On the sole, I mean, this weight is weight. towards the heel. Now, yeah. not necessarily all the way in the heel, you know, like other manufacturers might yeah. have it, but this back weight is towards the heel a little bit, the 13 grams. So, I mean, there's there's some draw bias that is intentionally added in the club, but maybe just not as much as the other clubs here, as we'll see on this. Day. Yeah, I say at a dress, it looked like a larger version of the Stealth HD. Okay. That's about what it kind of looked Interesting. like. Interesting, okay. Yeah. So, yeah. Break us, uh, you know, get us started on this data here, Thomas. Break it down for us. Uh, yep. What are you seeing? Um, what are you paying attention to when you're talking about a draw bias driver? Yeah, so, I mean, curve. Yeah. Curve to the left. I mean, we'll notice here every single action going to bring up every single shot that we hit here. If we just look on the right side, every single shot curved to the left. So the draw yep. bias clubs were were doing its yes. job. There was a couple also, of Also, you do swing the club as if, you know, you have a draw naturally. So that yep. help, helps. But to see every single one, there was a couple there with the Mizuno that got close to being a, a straight ball or even right. to the right. I think nine feet of curve to the left was, yep. the, was the lowest mm -hmm. amount of curve. Yep. Um, I mean, 147 to 149 efficiency. Your ball speed numbers are all, yeah, they're pretty, very pretty close, close together, very close. right? Yep. 151 to 153. Now launch angle, we're close to basically 15 degrees with each one of them. Mm -hmm. Spin between 2089 and 2735. Yep. Um, so yeah, well, there's a couple of drivers that definitely spun a lot less, and that was the Stealth HD and the STX. Interesting. Those yeah. two, I thought was interesting. The fact the spin rate was you know close to 2100. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That 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 is something to note too, because you know four players. You know, again, we're talking about uh, golfers that generally slice the ball, and they probably, in most cases, do have a lot of spin. And so bringing that down is something they're probably thinking about, or will be, or their fitter will be talking about. Yeah. in the fitting and so maybe those two models will be uh, some options especially that stealth HD having a low spin like that could be a big help in, in cracking that right and I think you know come back to the curve I think this is a, a great screen to, to bring up and discuss yeah. here and with the exception I think there was one with the Callaway that yeah. it was more of a push drawer it turned yeah. back a little bit at the end but it kind of stayed out there yeah um, you can see the other red lines were a lot of red over left. on the left yep. yeah um, you know, everything had that curve to the left which is mm -hmm. which is impressive so who had the most amount of curve well if we rank this from right. highest to lowest the, the ping g425 sft average curve was 98 feet to the left um, and then if you take a look you know consistency plus or minus 28 rogue, rogue max d um, the curve was 89 feet of the left, to the left but we did have that one that shot one. I, I, I think it was just we, the one that didn't we, quite if we turn take over that as one much. out. That was must have been that one. Yeah, it was yeah, 19. Like, I mean, you look at the other three ones. over 100. Um, so that right. average would go up probably quite a bit if you took out that that uh, that final one there in yeah. that set. So you have, um, yeah, I mean you, you have a Rogue ST Max and I think Ping G425 SFT were giving you the most curve left. Right. There was a couple other ones that obviously were were close. Uh, I think the E523 was a really good one as well um, but there's also one that really didn't curve over nearly as much as the others yeah no that was that was the stx so you can see 9 16 37 47 48 feet of curve mm -hmm. um, i want to go back over here to the ping the least amount of curve was 70 feet to the left with the ping. Yeah. the highest of 150 so i guess consistency consistency yeah. Probably goes to the ping on the ability to get the ball to curve left every single time. Mm -hmm. I think, you know, the Rogue Max XD got potential there. It wasn't maybe quite as consistent. You feel like we had a range from 19 right. feet to 144 feet. Yeah. Um, you see the Stealth HD, it was curving. It just wasn't, then we got any in the hundreds at all. Right. And the SDX, as I mentioned, the highest, highest was 40, 48. 48. Yeah. yeah. E5, 23, 127, 39, 127. Yeah, so, and then Cobra, the 43 feet curve to 103. Yeah, so maybe a little more consistent on those ones where there's not a huge separation. Uh, but I think, you know, the, it's, it's fun to, for me to sit here and I've watched you hit drivers in this screen so many times and how comfortable, I guess, maybe not comfortable is the word, maybe how easy it was for you to just turn that thing over and turn it over a lot with yeah. these drivers shows how much 
you know, the, the, the draw bias helps, and it, it, it helps you turn that ball over. Probably exaggerates it a little bit if you're someone who already plays a draw, which is why I said at the beginning, if you struggle with the hook, this video is not for you. But if you slice the ball, <laughs> this is the, you know, these are the potential corrections you can have. You're curving the ball several feet more left right. than you normally do here. I find it interesting looking at ping here. Um, the face to path, negative 3.4 with 98 feet of curve. Callaway 3.5 with 89 feet. So, you know, ping even with maybe a little less face closure versus Callaway there still yeah. did draw more yeah. overall. But the you know, good news is all of them had that face to path going on the left through the design of the club head being a little closed, sure. through CG, through offset. Yeah, yeah. So it's, it's help. It's, you know, you probably don't even feel it necessarily sometimes, but just it is helping that face square up a little bit and you know be left of the path of your swing which is how you hit a draw so yeah um, i know it's not going to be that lickety split for any golfer with a slice that comes in here but it certainly helps you correct that and then obviously with other potential adjustment adjustments to be made with the hosel things like that uh, you can really dial in somebody and get them you know reducing that slice quite a bit yeah so remember it's, it's a bias mm -hmm. it's it's going to help so if you had just a standard driver head versus a draw bias head, you're gonna see more curve to the left or less curve to the right. But yeah. it's not going to all of a sudden solve everything. You still have to have the ability to be able to get that face more close yeah. to the path to right. really get it going left. Right, exactly. Well, uh, I think that kind of wraps it up here, Thomas. Some, some really good data information here. Um, six really good models of drivers here at the end of 2022 into 2023. That can be great options. And like I mentioned before, these are also going to be great moving forward for goers that don't want to pay top dollar for something new in 2023 and beyond. Great used options here at Second Swing. You can get fit for, and one of our experts will take care of you, get it in your bag, help you hit straighter and longer tee shots. Thank you again, Thomas. Really good data. Golfers, make sure you tell us again in the comments which one of these is your favorite, and we'll see you next time on the channel.